President Biden might have made some of Amazon's union busting tactics possible. His inaction on promises to have corporate disclosures on anti-union spending and withholding government contracts from companies who use union bus busting tactics might have energized Amazon's counterattack. Founder of the Daily Poster, editor at large, Jackman David Sirota is here to discuss. Good to see you, David. Part of the reason I love the work that you do is you always follow the nitty gritty stuff in terms of what it means and how it can empower some of the behavior that we see. What exactly is going on with this enforcement against corporate disclosure? What does the government have to do with it and Biden himself? So Joe Biden was lauded uh, pretty widely when he released a video saying nice things about unions during Amazon's union drive. But what Joe Biden uh, didn't do uh, is follow through on his campaign promises uh, to put in place two rules that are designed to push back and deter uh, against union busting. One rule is the essentially a resurrection of an Obama era rule, which is designed to require companies uh, to more uh, thoroughly disclose what kinds of spending they're doing on anti-union activity. Uh, and then another rule that he promised was uh, a rule to essentially ban federal contracts from going to corporations and contractors uh, that uh, do not sign or agree to sign a union neutrality agreement. By that, I mean uh, federal contracts couldn't go to companies uh, that didn't say, hey, we're going to stay neutral in our workers' union drives. If workers want to unionize, great. If they don't want to unionize, great. But we're going to stay out. So Biden promised that. And you can understand how much of a deterrent uh, both of those things could be. The disclosure rule uh, would give union organizers a lot more information uh, to run their campaigns uh, and to publicize uh, how much money companies are spending to try to prevent workers from uh, joining a union. And then the uh, contractor rule for a company like Amazon, for instance, which is bidding on federal contracts, it is a deterrent which says, if you engage in the kind of aggressive uh, anti-union activity uh, that you're engaging in uh, against your workers who are trying to form a union, you may be putting at risk uh, billions of dollars of federal contracts that you want. Biden has the executive authority to try to move those forward. Uh, it could face a legal challenge. Obviously, all executive orders uh, face can face legal challenges in ways that legislation itself can't. But he has the executive authority to try to move an executive order forward. He has not done that. Mm -hmm. I think that is incredibly important. And like you said, to highlight the the distance between, okay, you put on a video that, you know, supported the workers' rights to unionize, that's great. And the bar has been set so low on presidents being pro-union at all that everyone was like, oh my gosh, wow, he actually said the word union. That's amazing. <laughs> on the other hand, these were real promises that were made that could have more directly impacted the ultimate outcome here. What about, David, you know, the Biden uh, administration has been sort of touting the PRO Act, but doesn't seem like there's a lot of political muscle behind it. That would more broadly reshape the landscape and make it more possible for workers to organize, would give unions more power um, once they had, once those workers had uh, decided to join the union. What do you make of the fate of the PRO Act, and what do you think that progressives should be doing to make sure that this thing actually gets through or at least has a shot? Well, it's a good point, because the, the initiatives that I just talked about are in the PRO Act itself. And obviously, ideally, it would be better to have these things legislated uh, than put on record through an executive order that can be repealed by a future president. The problem is, is that the filibuster means that the PRO Act will almost certainly need 60 votes to pass. And there are almost certainly not 60 votes in the Senate uh, to pass the PRO Act. So if you don't get rid of the filibuster, it's fair to say that you're not serious about passing uh, the PRO Act. Uh, that's just a, a mathematical reality. Uh, and so Chuck Schumer has said uh, that basically uh, he wants at least 50 senators on record, 50 Democratic senators on record, saying they support the PRO Act before he brings it to the floor. But bringing the PRO Act to the floor without uh, ending the filibuster is a spectacle. And so it, it raises the question, is all of the rhetoric, Joe Biden, the most you know pro-union president mm -hmm. of our lifetime, Joe Biden is FDR, et cetera, et cetera, is all of that rhetoric designed to put out an image that the party itself with its own power, whether in the Senate or in the White House, that the party, the Democratic Party, is not willing to use. 
I mean, that's the real question here. The party has the power to move forward, for instance, executive order versions of those rules. The party has the power uh, to end the filibuster. The party is saying it is pro-union. But at the end of the day, if you don't move forward the executive orders, if you don't get rid of the filibuster to clear the way for the PRO Act, are you really pro-union? Yeah. You know, David, it has very strong uh, Obama Employee Free Choice Act vibes, where it's like, yeah, he said he supported it, he campaigned on it, told labor what they wanted to hear, but then the minute that the political support wasn't there, it just collapsed, and there was no real muscle put behind it to actually try to get it through, and then it was just abandoned. That's such a good point. I mean, that whole fight, it's been memory hold. I mean, completely memory hold. Barack Obama said, you know, I will to, uh, to put on some comfortable shoes and, and picket and campaign with uh, workers if their uh, strikes are broken. Uh, he didn't go to Wisconsin to do that. He didn't really push uh, the Employee Free Choice Act, which was, again, another kind of uh, law designed to make it easier to join a union. We have lived this cycle over and over and over again of Democrats campaigning for office, promising to do right by the uh, unions and the union workers and the union rank and file uh, that have supported them, and then getting into office office, uh, offering up small ball measures, but not actually systematically trying to use their power to reform the structure of labor law in America, a labor law that is right now, I think it's indisputable that it is rigged against workers joining unions. Yeah. Yep. And then they wonder why their share of the working class electorate dwindles. They wonder why the share of union power dwindles. It all goes back to these types of decisions. David, great to see you. Thanks, David. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Mm -hmm. More rising for you after this.